Good morning everybody. Today we have the card The Crow and this is a very interesting card because <coughs> it is number 13 and a lot of people think 13 is a bad luck number but it is a beautiful number and I uh, I always welcome it in my life number 13 because in the I Ching it means fellowship so that means friends and friendship so you might be making a new friend today and one and three is of course four and that means in the tarot stability proper foundations like the four of wands and taking it easy and rest like the four of swords and uh, also closing yourself off in the good sense not in the bad sense like the four of coins and the four of cups if four of cups is that somebody might be coming back an old friend might be coming back from the past like the four of cups and giving you a present or a gift I I see a lot in this card uh, it is a raven a crow is like a raven uh, I rather see it as a raven than a crow and it to me it is a very symbolic bird it comes uh, in uh, in mythology it comes uh, to life it has history it is also a, th a mythology symbol or it is a yield or yield yielded as a holy bird a s sacred bird also in witchcraft, pagans, folklore and lots more even in the royal um, family or the royalty in the Tower of London so today's card is going to be not only what it means and what today's sense is so let's have a look at what this card brings to life at least for me and it is food for thought so let's get started and dig a little bit deeper okay now the card the crow spirit and also the native uh, Americans the, the Indians uh, also in Canada they have um, uh, uh, an Indian group or how do you say it a native group called the crow now I'm going to give you the message of um, the author of this deck uh, the mystical shaman deck um, by Colette Baron Reed and she uh, interprets the message uh, as such as you look around you can you sense the magic that pulses through the world have you witnessed how every thought can become a thing so everything that you want to manifest and think about will come to life so stay positive in your thinking how every intention can call the universe into action as a sacred laws shape what you experience so what you think or what you want will come true so be careful of what you wish or what you want the universe works in perfect order when you align your thoughts you are positive thinking feelings and beliefs with spirit you will want to crow with delight feeling the excitement and wonder of being in harmony with everything much larger than yourself the crow spirit says you are right on target so you're on the right path now to see your dreams magically coming true and come into being in the visible world the laws of abundance compensation frequency and praise are operating in your favor now so everything that you're wanting and you're visualizing you're manifesting thinking about is just about to come true the laws of abundance and uh, sorry the law of abundance compensation frequency 
and praise are operating in your favor now. Remember to be grateful and praise what is yours, even if it is still coalescing into form. So even if it is shaping into being, okay, still residing in the invisible realms of co-creation, no matter that what area your life of your life you are concerned with now so it doesn't matter whether it's business or love or anything else it will happen what you hope for is on its way the spirit is your co-creating partner wow now so what you are visualizing manifesting thinking is being brought to life being brought into the visible visi visible world sorry i can't get out my words my allergies are also playing up sorry <coughs> now i want to so what you are looking at what you're hoping for is going to come true and it will be a stable factor in your life because you've got number 13 which is a four okay now what I would like to go into a little bit as well is that the crow is a symbol in folklore, paganism, um, in, in a lot of cultures the crow is also a symbol of death because of the blackness. But if you look deeper, the black is right like an um, indigo blue, a shiny silvery blue. Okay. So the crow is also a symbol in some cultures of death and bad luck. But it's not always the case though. As we have already said, a crow may be a symbol of life, magic and mysteries. It also symbolizes intelligence because he is very, very intelligent and they learn very fast. Also, it um, resembles uh, flexibility and destiny. In the Greek mythology, the crow is also considered as a symbol of prophecy and good luck. So, if you see a crow, that something that is prophesied will, in your life, will come to you. Okay, now I'm going to do a little bit of history about the crow, and I know that the crow is also um, a regal bird, a royal bird. So something regal could be happening with you today. Because it is also a bird of protection. Okay, it protects like the Tower of London already since around 16, 1620, no, 1660 or 65. I'm going to read a little bit of history about the the crow um, uh, that is uh, where it comes from so it's interesting where why people are so fascinated with the crow but I'm going I've dug up some history uh, on YouTube of rather the Wikipedia So here we go, and that's what I find fascinating about tarot cards, oracle cards. They mean so much more. It's not only the cards, it's also the history or cultural things behind the cards. I see a lot more in cards than just a picture. Okay, like this is a bit of history for everybody that's either going to England or something that you want to take up and look into it a little bit deeper so that when you go to England, the UK, you might want to go to the Tower of London. Ravens of the Tower of London. At least there are six captive ravens. They are uh, resident at the Tower of London. Their presence is traditionally believed to protect the crown and the tower. A superstition holds that if the Tower of London, uh, if one of the, the ravens at the Tower of London is lost or fly away, 
then the crown will fall, and so will Britain. Some historians, include, including the Tower official history, believe that the Tower Ravens mythology is likely to be Victorian, flight or fantasy perhaps. <coughs> Excuse me. The earliest known reference to captive ravens at the Tower is an illustration from 1883. Historically, wild ravens were common throughout Britain, even in the towns, the tower being within their natural range. When they were exterminated from much of their traditional range, including London, they could only exist at the tower, in captivity, and with official support. The tower ravens are tended to by the raven master of the yeoman warders. That's a special ward group. Local legend puts the origin of the captive ravens population. At the time of King Charles II, uh, who reigned in 1660 to 1685, some of the ravens at the tower were specially bred in Somerset so there are not many wild ravens in England, but these ravens at the tower m are the guardians of the tower, and if one of them dies or flies away, then the crown will fall and so will England. So that is a fascinating bit of news. So even the superstition goes way into the royal royalty. And I think that is fascinating, especially when you have the history of England and the knights in shining armor. Perhaps I'm a bit romantic, um, uh, romanticizing things, but I find it fascinating. So I hope you've enjoyed today's card and the little bit of culture and history lesson. And if you want to know more about paganism, then go and have a look at the series the Dutch witch Wendy and Shah. We discussed the deck, uh, the witch's oracle, and that was by Marla Brooks, and there we see the crow and the raven. So have a look at the series, and it is a fascinating series because we have discussions about what is the difference between a pagan and a witch, and a witch and a reflexologist, or an somebody else that's like a herbalist okay so I hope you've enjoyed today's message so there is good luck around you don't be negative don't think negative because some people uh, see the crow as bad luck but a lot of the people um, honor this bird and see it as good luck and positivity so be focused positively and it will come to you. Be careful what you wish for and what you're thinking. Because it, it, we've got a saying in Holland, thought gives power. So what, in other words, if you think about something, it will come to being. So believe in that. What you think, what you feel, what you say will come to being. I hope you enjoyed today's card and I wish you a wonderful day and I'm going live again tonight because it's Friday so I hope to see you there. Take care and have a wonderful day. Ciao ciao.